Greetings. In this lesson, we will develop the skills which will allow us to model any sized brick or plate, and we will pay special attention to the level of detail. A brick or plate that is distant from the camera can be much simpler, a much simpler version, than a brick or plate that is close to the camera. Likewise, uh, you'll need to determine whether or not the viewer is able to see the bottom of the brick or plate, in which case uh, you will need to model uh, sufficient detail for that view. Likewise, as is often the case, most bricks and plates are stacked. And so a brick or plate that is contained within the stack can be much simpler than, uh, for instance, a brick or plate that is serving as the cap of a stack, as we can see there. All right, we'll get started by building our peg start. Be right back. Let's get started. We'll begin by creating a polygonal cylinder and we'll open the dialog box. Create polygonal primitive cylinder, click on the dialog box, and we'll set our subdivisions to eight and we'll make sure that our axis is set to Y. Axis divisions eight, axis Y, we'll hit create. So here we have a cylinder just sitting at the origin. I'm going to maximize my front view and we will scale this to the appropriate size, which is 0.4 on the Y. 0.4, this will be the height of our peg. Now we're going to reposition the pivot. We'll place the pivot at the bottom so that we can grid snap this peg or cylinder to the ground plane. You'll recall that repositioning the pivot is tapping the D key, just going to tap the D key. And we'll slide this up on the Y. You'll recall that Selecting one of our arrows now constrains us on that axis direction. So we've essentially constrained ourselves on the Y. And this will allow us to now hold down the V key, V key for vertex snap. Hold down the V key and I can middle mouse button just to this vertex. And that pivot point, which is constrained on the Y, now snaps to the uh, exact bottom of the shape. And I'm going to undo that, and let's try that again. So we came to Y, we said 0.4. Um, we tapped the D key with the Move Tool active. We slid this up on the Y. We're now constrained on that axis direction, Y. We'll, we've held down the V key and middle mouse button click on this vertex here. And then we'll tap the D key to get out of that mode. And now we've effectively repositioned the pivot to the bottom of the object. Now we can grid snap up and the cylinder or peg is sitting exactly on the ground plane, which is what we're after. Okay, we'll jump into the perspective view. I'm going to tap the Q key and we're going to delete this bottom set of faces. We'll right click and choose face and we'll Click around, I'm holding the Shift key to make that selection, and I'm going to hit the 4 key just to make sure I didn't select anything on the other side. Whenever we're selecting a series of faces, uh, it can uh, select a, a cross, and so you want to hit the 4 key out of good habit and make sure you've got a clean selection. I'll hit the 5 key to get back into shaded mode, and I'm going to hit the Delete key. Delete key. So we've deleted the bottom set of faces on this cylinder peg. Now we'll extrude that bottom edge out to complete the shape. We want to select this bottom set of edges. It's a perfect loop, so we can just double click on the edge. Once again, I, I right clicked, chose edge, and then we're double clicking on that bottom edge. And we'll extrude it. We'll jump into the top view for this extrusion. We're going to extrude it and then create a 4x4 four four square. Uh, we'll come to the modeling toolkit and here is our extrude tool. We'll hit it and we can drive out on the local Z. Now we don't have an exact number and in fact we want to come up well short uh, so that we can snap uh, these vertices to this grid. Uh, we'll right click to get back into object mode and just take a look at that there. We're going to be snapping to this square outline. We'll right click, 
can choose vertex and we'll pick a vertex and we're going to do this one at a time with the move tool and you'll recall that we always want to or typically want to touch what we're snapping to uh, it can be problematic to try to drag if I try to drag it I might inadvertently um, constrain myself and then when I try to grid snap over here right it doesn't allow me to grid snap to this uh, intersection because I'm constrained on the Z. I'll hit undo. To get out of the constraint, right, we just click back in the middle and I see the two colors. I see the red X and the blue Z, which means I'm free to snap in both of those directions. And out of good habit, we'll hold down the X key and we won't drag it. We'll simply click on what we're snapping to, which is this intersection. So I'll hold down the X key and middle mouse button. And let's skip, we'll skip those middle ones just so you can see this form. Selecting it, and I'm, I'm not dragging it, I'm not touching these arrows, I want to see blue and I want to see red. And we'll hit X and snap that there. And again, just the reason, I, if I go to uh, drag it, I might accidentally activate the arrow and then you can see, hey, how come I can't get down here to the grid? Well, you're constrained. We can just click back in the middle to get rid of that constraint. And again, good habit, X key, middle mouse button, we're, we're clicking on what we're snapping to. We're not dragging to what we're snapping to. Now we can come back and do these interme intermediary. We'll hold down the X key, middle mouse button, X key, middle mouse button, X key, middle mouse button, X key, middle mouse button. And here we have our initial peg. We are now going to bevel the edges of that original cylinder. Why? Well, we're eventually going to subdivide this, and you'll recall that the 3 key, and I'm in object mode, the 3 key allows me to see a subdivision preview. And we can see here that the peg itself has now become soft when we subdivide it. I'll tap the 1 key to get back. And so what we'll do is we'll bevel these two edges. Right click to edge, double click. Uh, so we've got that top edge of the cylinder selected and I'll shift double click shift key allows me to make multiple selections so uh, double click shift double click and this is the appropriate edge we'll jump back to five and we'll hit bevel and our fraction for this uh, cylinder is 0.2 on the fraction and segments are two and you recall, because we're inputting and we've clicked here, uh, if I were to select anything else on the keyboard, for instance, I want to hit the 3 key to get back to my smooth preview. Because I've been inputting, it would put the 3 in here. So once we're done inputting in any of these windows, we want to right click uh, on the object, back to object mode. That completes the process. And now I can cleanly hit the 3 key to preview that smooth and we can see that we've effectively created the rounded cylinder, right? Uh, it's sharp on these appropriate edges here. And here is our peg start. We're going to delete our history. If we were to come to the channel box, you could see, right? We could see that we've got this history involved here. And now that we're moving on, we no longer need it. And so we'll come to edit, delete by type history, you recall that by type deletes for whatever is selected. All by type deletes globally. In this case, either one would, would, would be fine, but we'll, out of good habit, come to delete by type history. And this is selected in object mode. So we'll hit that. We've cleaned up our uh, inputs. And we'll put the pivot. Um, uh, the pivot is at the bottom. We want to make sure that the pivot is at the bottom. Be sure that our history is deleted. And we'll export this as our peg start. So with this selected in object mode, we'll come to File, Export Selection. And this will be the starting point for uh, any number of bricks or plates. We'll call this peg start. All right, I'm going to duplicate this and set uh, a version aside. So I'm just gonna slide that up and because you've saved yours out, you can just uh, import yours, or you can follow along with me. Make a duplicate, and then just hide that away uh, on your 
layers. All right, I'll let you get to this point and then we'll get started on completing our first plate. Very good, be right back. Welcome back, let's create our one by one plate. We'll begin by extruding this outer edge. I'm going to hit the Q key, right click, choose edge, and then we'll double click that outer edge. Four key, get a better look there. Five key, we'll come to the modeling toolkit and we'll hit extrude. And we're going to drive this down 1.6 units in the negative Z direction. And we can type that value in. We arrived at that value because a brick is 4.8 units high based on the size of our initial cylinder. And a plate is one third uh, the height of a brick. 1.6 times 3 is 4.8, and that's how we arrived at that value. So negative 1.6 on the local translate Z. We'll right click to object mode to complete that process, and then we'll finish the bottom. We'll right click and choose that bottom edge. Uh, just double click that bottom edge, and we'll come to mesh fill hole, mesh fill hole. And if we hit the 5 key, we can see that it is indeed uh, giving us a face, but it is an ingon. If we hit the 3 key, we can see that a little more clearly. We have 8 edges, whereas we want uh, all of our faces to be 4-sided or quads. We'll hit the 1 key, and we'll just complete this using the multi-cut tool in its native form. So uh, multi-cut tool is active, and we'll click and drag till we get to that middle edge. And we'll do the same, we'll click and drag. Now that we've completed that, we'll hit return or enter on the PC. And then we'll complete this edge. We'll click and drag, come over to the other side, click and drag, and then we'll hit return when we're done. Now a note here, whenever you're using the multi-cut tool, and you can see that it looks like a little X-Acto knife, uh, once you're done, you immediately want to hit the Q key to get out of that mode so that you don't inadvertently create uh, an additional vertex. So good habit here. We'll hit the Q key, complete that. We're now out of the multi-cut tool. And we have our starting point plate to create any size. Now before we export this, we're going to delete the history. So we'll come back to object mode. We'll say edit, delete by type history. And then let's put the pivot point at the bottom. So you'll recall, right, we started uh, with our pivot point at the bottom of the cylinder. Here is our, our ground plane. And we'll put the pivot point at the bottom of the object. And it's the same process. Uh, reposition pivot, we'll tap the D key. We're going to touch the Y axis to constrain ourselves in that direction. Uh, it was green, now it's yellow, which means we're constrained. And we'll hold down the V key for vertex snapping. And then with our middle mouse button, we'll snap to this uh, vertex. And because it was constrained, it just comes straight down. It didn't snap over here. Let me uh, just remind you, let's say we did have it uh, not constrained. We had it uh, the ability to snap in any direction. And I held down the V key and the middle mouse button. It would snap over there, right? It would snap to match. Uh, the vertex that I was snapping to, going to hit undo. But with it yellow, constrained on the Y, when I hold down the V key and middle mouse button snap, it's constrained on that direction. And then to finish the process, we'll tap the D key. And now we've got the pivot point perfectly at the bottom, and we'll grid snap that up, sitting on the ground plane. And here is our starting point one by one plate. And with this uh, one by one plate start, we can create any sized plate. So with this selected in object mode, history deleted, pivot at the bottom, we'll come to edit, excuse me, file, export selection, and just call this one by one plate start, one by one plate start. All right, I'll let you get to that point and uh, we'll get started on creating the beveled version of this plate. Be right back. Welcome back. Let's bevel our edges, right? If we hit the three key, we can see that if we subdivide this, this would be soft. So we will right click and choose the top square. We'll shift double click. Uh, now because this is the terminal edge loop, we have to shift double click four times uh, to get that square all the way around. So if we take a look here in the four mode, 
we've got that top square and the bottom square. And then before we bevel, we need to also select these four edges. So we're selecting all of the exterior edges of the shape, top square, bottom square, and then the four outer edges, or corner edges. And we'll come to Modeling Toolkit, and we'll hit Bevel. And in this case, the fraction is 0.1. Originally on our cylinder, that fraction was 0.2. Uh, in this case, it's 0.1, and our segments are 2. And we want to right-click to object mode, right, once we're done inputting those values. We'll right-click to object mode, and uh, with the 5 key, if you haven't already done so. And we can hit the 3 key, and we see that subdivision preview. And we have a nice one-by-one one plate ready to go. Now, of course, the bottom isn't recessed, so this would be a version that you would uh, have perhaps on the top of a stack. And we want to export this one. Uh, we want to delete the history first, delete by type history. You already have the pivot uh, at the bottom, so there's no need to reposition the pivot. And we would export this as file, export selection, and this would be our uh, usable uh, geometry. We would call this one by one plate beveled, one by one plate beveled, and this is a piece that you can use in a project and you will use in upcoming projects. Be sure to uh, export that. All right, now you can create a new scene and you can import uh, your one by one start, right? Uh, I'm gonna hide that away and here is my one by one start. So you would go uh, File New Scene, and then File Import, and import that one by one plate start, one by one plate start, which is simply our, our version that is not yet beveled. And with this new one, we'll create the interior indentation. That is for a scenario where you're going to see the bottom of the one by one plate. So we'll select these four faces. And we'll come to the Modeling Toolkit, and we'll hit Extrude. And this is going to be uh, on the offset, and it's going to be 0 0.8, 0 0.8. So we've simply extruded that and pulled it in, offset 0 0.8. And then we'll extrude a second time. We'll extrude a second time. And this will be on the local Z, and this will be negative 0 0.8, negative 0 0.8. And so this gives us our recess. We'll immediately right click to object mode once we're done inputting those values. And of course we need to bevel up the edges. If we hit the three key, you can see we have the recess, but it is uh, soft. And so we'll go through the process of selecting the edges. We'll double click that top edge, a little bit easier to see there. We'll shift double click this bottom edge because it's not terminal, we can just shift double click once and it goes around the loop. We have uh, this bottom recessed edge. And then because this is the terminal edge, we will need to shift double click four times around. So let's just see, we've got four squares now, right? We've got this top edge square, the bottom edge square, the interior bottom edge square, and then the interior recessed bottom edge square. So those four edge loops around. And now we have to select the uh, corners. So we'll pick one, shift select, shift select two, shift select three, shift select four. All right, we've got those edges. And then we have to pick the edges of the recess as well. So we'll shift click, and I'm not double clicking because that would run the loop up all the way to the cylinder. And this is the uh, diagonal that we do not want selected. We do not want to bevel this edge. That would give us unnecessary additional geometry. So we're uh, not double clicking, but we're picking these uh, interior edges. I had that first one selected. Uh, shift select, shift select, shift select. Now I know that's a little bit hard to see, but just think about it. Um, uh, we're getting all of the exterior edges. So we have the four squares, 
we have the four outer edges, and now we've just selected the four uh, uh, interior edges of the recess. And then finally, we're going to shift select these four outer diagonals. Not on top, you see that it's one, two, three, four, not these. But we did want these on the bottom. And I'll dolly around there so that you can see, right, we have this square in total, edge, edge, this square, this square, the outer edges, and then the top square. And if we hit the four key, I'll dolly around so that you can see that. And if you ex uh, execute the bevel and you've missed something, simply undo and make the proper selection. If you need to deselect, uh, if you accidentally select an edge you don't need, you can control click it to deselect and maintain the rest of your uh, proper selection. So that looks good. We'll hit bevel and we'll recall that this is going to be 0.1 and our segments are 2. We're no longer inputting, so we'll right click to object mode. We'll hit the 5 key and uh, we can take a look there. This is where you want to check, and you can see that everything is four-sided. Everything has four edges. Even these very tiny faces are fours. And we can hit the three key, and you see we have, once again, a nice bevel. And our completed shape with the interior recess. Before we export this one, we'll come to File, uh, excuse me, Edit. Delete by type history. I have it selected in object mode. We're getting rid of the history. You already have the pivot at the bottom, right, so that it's sitting on the ground plane. And we would export this one, file, uh, export selection, and this would be one by one plate recessed. We don't have to say beveled. We'll just assume that every time we recess that there is also a bevel included. So we have uh, one by one plate recessed. And this would be uh, for any of the scenarios where we're going to see the bottom of the shape. All right, I'll let you get to that point and then we'll continue building uh, the plates out. And with this next set of processes, you'll be able to uh, uh, combine uh, into any numerical version uh, of a plate. All right, be right back. Welcome back. So we want to create a new scene, file new scene, and then we want to say File Import, and you'll import your one by one plate start. One by one plate start. That's our unbeveled and unrecessed version. This will allow us to make uh, combinations. First thing we'll do is just slide this over. So I'm in the top view, right? Our pivot is already at the bottom, and I'm going to grid snap this out two units in the positive x direction. So two units on the positive x direction. We have Z forward, if we check that out in the perspective view, right, Z forward. And we've moved this out two units on the positive X. Let's jump back into the top view and we'll make a duplicate, edit, duplicate, and we'll grid snap it two units in the negative X direction. And you can see here in the channel box, translate X uh, negative two. And we're going to delete the facing faces. So let's slide this out. And we'll right click. And uh, if you want to use your modeling tool, if your modeling toolkit's already available to you, we can click on faces here. And we'll select these two faces. Always a good idea to hit the four key to make sure you have a clean selection. And we'll hit delete. And then we'll come and we'll do the same on this one. Shift select, four key, just to make sure it's a good selection. And then we'll hit delete. And now we'll move this one back. Uh, to two, right? We recall that it was two on the X. So we we have these two one by one starts with their facing faces having been deleted. They're sitting right next to each other and we will combine them. We'll combine and it's a two-step process. We'll also have to merge the vertices. Uh, and let me actually make a note here. If we were to count, right, we've got a uh, set of uh, vertices here, there's one and there's one. So when we move this uh, together, come back into object mode, 
and put that back to two. There's a vertex there and there's a vertex there. They're sitting on top of each other. There's two. When we combine the two meshes, those don't automatically weld or merge. Uh, and that's beneficial in many scenarios. But we want them to be merged, so that will be a second step for us. Come back to the Q key. Shift select both in object mode, right? Two separate shapes. We'll come to the modeling toolkit, and we'll hit combine. And then as I mentioned, if we come and choose a uh, vertex here, and we slide it out, right? We've got two vertices sitting in the same place. And so we need to uh, merge those together. And we don't have to be very specific in our selection. We can just draw a big bounding box around everything. And only the vertices that are within 0 0.01 proximity to each other will be welded or merged. You can change that. Uh, in upcoming lessons, we'll need to uh, understand the threshold. The default is 0 0.01, and that's where we will leave it for this set of exercises. But uh, that dialog box is where you'll change it. So we have all of the vertices selected, right? Once again, big bounding box around everything. And we'll say Edit Mesh, Merge. And now if I pick a vertex and move it, you can see that it's singular. Those two have been welded together, and we have a singular shape. And so here we have another starting point. We have our one by two plate start. And we would want to have this selected. We always want to delete the history. You can verify that your pivot point is at the bottom, and it's not, right? We've created this new shape. So we want to put the pivot point at the bottom. Once again, we tap the D key. We'll activate the Y. We'll hold down the V key, and we'll middle mouse button snap. To that vertex because it was constrained on the Y it comes straight down even with the vertex we were snapping to. To get out of the reposition pivot mode we'll tap the D key. So we've got the pivot at the bottom, we've deleted our history, and we have our one by two start and uh, plate start and we would say file uh, with it selected in object mode file, export selection, and we would call this one by two plate start. All right, I'll let you get to this point and we'll pick up creating uh, additional plates in the next section. Be right back. Welcome back. Let's bevel our one by two plate start. And this is the same workflow. I'll do it once again. We'll shift double click. So we've got that edge all the way around. We'll do this, uh, right now these are rectangles. We'll shift double click around. And because this is the terminal edge loop, we had to uh, shift click around. I'll hide my grid, make it a little easier to see. And then we want our four corners. And right, top rectangle, bottom rectangle, and then the four corners. And we'll come to the modeling toolkit. We'll hit bevel. You'll recall that it's point one and segments two. And we'll immediately right click to object mode. You can tap the three key and you can see that we have a nice beveled. We would select this, delete the history, file, export selection with it in object mode. And this would be one by two plate beveled, one by two plate beveled. And this would be usable. This is the version that we would use in a project, right? Our starts, the uh, shapes that we're designating with start, are for building subsequent shapes. Once we've beveled it, now it is usable. Now, of course, this is one by two beveled, but it does not have the recess. So let's come back after you've completed this one and we'll do the beveled version. Be right back. Welcome back. So we would want to say file new scene and then file import, and we'll import into the new scene the one by two start, one by two plate start, one by two plate start. And on this one, before we bevel, we'll create the recess. So we're selecting the 
uh, eight faces on the bottom. We'll hit the four key to make sure. And in this case, I did accidentally get a bad selection. So just control key to deselect. And we'll come back to five. Modeling toolkit. We'll hit extrude. And we want to uh, bring this in 0.8. And you'll recall we'll extrude a second time. We'll click the extrude a second time. And it is negative 0.8 on the Z. That is the uh, length or height of our recesses, 0.8. All right, uh, right click to object mode. And uh, again, if we hit the three key, we can see that we still need to bevel. And then here is, it's not a difficult process, but it's a little bit difficult to see. And so we'll double click that edge, shift double click this edge, so we have the top rectangle. We'll shift double, double click the bottom rectangle. We'll shift double click the bottom start of the recess. And then we'll have to shift double click around four times. Shift double click. Shift double click, shift double click, shift double click. So we've got the four rectangles. Uh, I'll hit the four key to see the wireframe. So top rectangle, bottom rectangle, bottom interior rectangle, bottom interior recessed rectangle. And now we'll pick the corners. So we'll shift click, shift click. Dolly around, shift click, shift click. We have the corners of the recess that we have to select. Shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. And then, uh, right, so we've got the outer corner edges, the interior recessed corner edges, and then we want the bottom diagonals. So that diagonal, shift click, shift click, Shift click, shift click. And if you make a bad selection, just control select it. So we'll hit the five key, right? We've got all those exterior edges. We don't have these though. And if I'll dolly around, hopefully you can see that. And if you bevel and you miss something or, or you had something that shouldn't be selected, simply undo and, and remake your selection. We'll hit bevel and we'll recall that our fraction is 0.1. Our segments are two, and we'll right click to object mode. Hit the five key to see that. And you want to dolly around just to make sure you've got a good set of edge selections, and we did. And you can hit the three key, and that'll also allow you to see. So here is our one by two plate recessed. Whenever we use the term recess, the bevel is assumed. So right, you, this is th uh, three versions. You have the one by two plate start. Then we had the one by two beveled. And here we have the one by two beveled recess. Now in an upcoming lesson, we'll talk about creating the uh, interior details and cylinders. But for this lesson, we'll consider this complete. We want to delete the history, delete by type history. Uh, making sure that the pivot is at the bottom, and it is. And so this is ready for export. We would say File, Export Selection, and this is 1 by 2 Plate Recess. 1 by 2 Plate Recess. All right, I'll let you finish that, and we'll come back and we'll look at creating our 2 by 4, 2 by 3, and 2 by 8. Be right back. Welcome back. We'll create a new scene, File, New Scene. And you'll say File, Import, and let's import 1 by 2 plate start. 1 by 2 plate start. And we'll create a 2 by 4. All right, let's execute the same process. Let's move this forward on the Z two units. So forward on the Z two units, if we take a look in the perspective view, right, Z forward. There is our center line. We've moved it forward two units. And we'll duplicate this, edit duplicate, and we'll grid snap it two units in the negative Z direction, negative Z. And you'll recall the faces that are facing need to be deleted. 
So we'll slide this out and we'll right click to face and we'll click the four faces, hit the four key to make sure you've got a clean selection. We'll hit the five key and we'll hit delete. And while we have them separated, we'll do the other side. One, two, three, four. Hit the four key to make sure it's a clean selection. We'll hit the delete key. And now we can set this back to negative two on the Z, negative two on the Z, right? Uh, what we have are the two facing each other with the uh, overlapping faces having been deleted. Now we'll select both and we'll come to the modeling toolkit. We'll hit combine. You'll recall from our previous explanation that those uh, vertices were sitting in the same place and although the shape is combined, they haven't been welded or merged. So we'll draw a big bounding box around everything. Uh, even though we're only merging these on the center line, we've gone ahead and just selected all of our vertices. And only those within 0.01 proximity to each other will be affected. We'll come to Mesh, uh, excuse me, Edit Mesh, Merge, Edit Mesh, Merge. And we can pick a vertex and you can slide it to see that they have been welded or merged together. And so here is our two by two plate start, two by two plate start. So we would say edit, delete by type history, edit, delete by type history, with it selected in object mode, file, export selection, two by two plate start. And you're getting the picture by now, right? If we wanted uh, to bevel these edges, which we do, right? The starts are for creating subsequent uh, shapes. And then our beveled version is where we begin working. Selecting the edges for the bevel, right? We would just go all the way around, uh, get the corners, get the bottom. Make sure I've got that. And we'll get the outer corner. Hit the four key, you can see that, right? The top, uh, in this case, square, the bottom square, and then the four corner edges. Oh, and I missed that one. And if you execute the bevel and you've missed something or misselected, simply undo and uh, coordinate the proper selection. So we've got that selected all the way around. We'll hit bevel. You'll recall that it is uh, point 0.1 and the segments is two, right click to object mode, five key, and we can see that there. Uh, you would delete the history, edit, delete by type history, file, export selection, two by two plate beveled, two by two plate beveled. Uh, I'm going to undo that just so we can quickly uh, continue the thought process. And this, uh, right, if we wanted to create the recessed version, and let, let me mention here, I'm selecting, and there's, the, we'll get to a point where selecting in this fashion it will take, take too long. It's inefficient. And you can see I've got a bad selection there. A better way, when you have a lot of faces to, to select, we'll just draw a bounding box around everything. And then in an orthographic view, we'll deselect all the top faces. So I could hold down the control key and draw a bounding box. And now I'm left with just those faces at the bottom. So once again, um, selecting in this fashion is becoming cumbersome because of the number of faces. So a better technique would be just select them all. And then in the orthographic view, deselect what you don't want. Control key, draw a bounding box. I don't want to go down here because then I get those bottom faces. But I'm stopping short. That's deselected, and just the faces on the bottom are left. We'll hit extrude, and our offset is uh, negative 0.8. Oh, excuse me, eight, uh, point 0.8. Sorry about that. Uh, point 0.8 inward, and we'll extrude a second time, and it's on the translate Z that is negative 0.8. And that creates a recess. And now this, this process of selecting these edges to be beveled uh, can be a bit of a hassle. So let me uh, double click 
we'll have to double click around four times, but essentially we've got that top square. We'll shift double click, we get the bottom square. We'll shift double click, we get the bottom uh, interior square. And then we'll have to shift double click around this interior. So we've got all of the squares. And uh, since we're down here, we'll just pick this edge. And this is exactly the same for the uh, other processes that we've already looked at. It's just a bit of a cumbersome task. And there's the potential to uh, select the wrong edge or to miss an edge. But as I've already said, if that's the case, just undo and uh, make a proper selection. So that looks right. And we'll hit bevel, and our fraction is 0.1, and our segments are 2. We'll right click to object mode, hit the 3 key, which allows you to evaluate, and there we have our 2x2 two two plate recessed. 2x2 two two uh, plate recessed, and the recessed assumes the bevel, right? 2x2 two two start, 2x2 two uh, plate start, 2x2 two two plate beveled, 2x2 two two plate recessed. All right, we'll come back and we'll wrap up. We'll just go straight for a 2x4, and then we'll talk about how we can apply the same technique to building the bricks. Be right back. Welcome back. I think you're getting the picture by now. We'll create a new scene, file new, and then we'll say file import, and we'll import 2x2 two two plate start. Here is our 2x2 two two plate start. We'll jump into the top view and let's uh, shift this four units in the positive Z. We'll verify that in the channel box, four units in the positive Z. We'll make a duplicate, uh, command D or the long way, edit duplicate, and we'll put it four units, and I'm grid snapping, or you could type in the value, in the negative Z. So here we have the two side by side, and we'll just repeat the process. Remember that that's negative four, so we'll slide it out. We'll um, select the faces, hit the Q key there. Four key, make sure we've got a clean selection. We'll hit delete. We'll just go right to the other side, and we've got those faces, and we'll hit delete. We can hit the five key, and we can see those facing each other. We'll come set this back to negative four, positioned it. You could grid snap it as well. We will have both selected in object mode, model and toolkit, combine. We know that although this is now a singular mesh, that these vertices have not been welded. They are still separate. And so our solution is uh, just select all of your vertices, even though only these central ones are going to be affected uh, by our merge uh, tool. So we'll come to Edit Mesh Merge. You can verify that those have been welded or merged. And here we have our 2x4 plate start. 2x4 plate start. Now using the techniques uh, that we've, we've been using throughout the course of this lesson is uh, appropriate up to about this size. If we're going to build a plate or brick much larger than this uh, kind of standard 2x4, there is another duplication technique, and I will show you that in a subsequent lesson. So everything that we've learned here uh, today in this lesson is appropriate for shapes up and to about this size. Now you can use the technique uh, and continue to duplicate these out, um, but there is another technique that may be a little bit more efficient, and I'll show that to you in an upcoming lesson. Now, you know, right, we would uh, have exported this 2 by 8, uh, excuse me, 2 by 4 plate start. We could then bevel the edges and call that 2 by 4 beveled. And then we could open the 2 by 4 start once again. And we could uh, extrude. And let me just skip forward to that one. And as we said, shift selecting gets cumbersome. So it's better just to select them all. Hold down the control key, deselect the top faces. We're left with the bottom. We can hit bevel, uh, excuse me, we can hit extrude. And our 
uh, offset, oops, I accidentally uh, executed the divisions. We want one. Our offset is 0.8, and uh, we'll extrude a second time. And our local z is negative 0.8. And you would go through the process at this point of selecting all the edges around so that you could bevel. And you would save this at 2 by 4 plate recessed, which assumes the bevel. All right, we'll come back in the final section, and I'll execute our first set of bricks, which uh, employs the exact same technique. The only difference is the height. So we'll be right back, and we'll wrap it up. Welcome back. Let's create a brick. We will say file new scene and we're going to go all the way back to our peg start. Peg start. So we'll say file import and we'll come back to our starting point peg. And you recall that we extrude this outer edge. The first time we extruded 1.6. This time we'll create the full sized brick version at 4.8. So in the modeling toolkit, we'll hit extrude. And we're going to drive this on the negative local translate Z, negative 4.8. And so this would be a one by one brick, right? Uh, initially, we created a one by one plate. And this is the exact same technique. The only difference was that 4.8. So we'll come back and we'll grab this bottom edge. We'll say mesh fill hole. And we'll come to the multi cut tool. And we'll click drag, click drag, and click drag, click drag, and we'll hit return. And uh, as you can see, we want to initially or immediately hit the Q key to get out of the multi cut. And here is our one by one start. Now let's delete our history. And we'll jump into the side view. Let's put the pivot at the bottom uh, in object mode. We'll tap the D key. We'll move that arrow up. Actually, we're moving it up, uh, but the process is uh, selecting this for constraining purposes. We'll hold down the V key, middle mouse button, snap that to the bottom, tap the D a second time to get out of that reposition pivot mode, and we'll grid snap this up so that it's sitting exactly on the ground plane. And so here is our one by one brick start. And uh, we've deleted the history. And with it selected in object mode, we'll say File, Export Selection, and we'll call that One by One Brick Start. And you can uh, continue that exact same process that we employed using the plates, in this case, with our brick. All right, uh, questions in this week's Tech Discussion Forum. I look forward to working with you. Have a good one.